I honor the spirit of the Lord in this place. I um, count it a privilege uh, for the invitation from your wonderful, gracious pastors to me on this evening. Um, let's just open up with a word of prayer if we can. If everybody would just bow their heads. Father, we thank you for this day, God. Father, we realize that nothing is by accident, coincident, or chance. So God, even before the foundations of the world, you knew that Thursday, January 28th, 2010 would be here. Father, you knew where we would be. You knew what we would stand in need of, oh God. So God, we stand in expectation right now to hear of your spirit, oh God. Father, we open ourselves and I yield myself as a vessel to be used for your glory in this place in this season, in this hour, oh God. And Father, I pray that every word in my mouth and even the very meditation and intents of my heart would be pleasing in your sight. Oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. We bless you, Lord God, for tabernacling with us tonight, oh God. Father, give us ears to hear, hearts to perceive, and a mind to do your will. We thank you in advance for the word that shall come forth. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let every heart in agreement say amen. 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 Well, if you would, open your Bibles to the ninth chapter of the book of Mark. Mark chapter 9. Pastor C. Elijah informed me that he's been talking to you guys about blessings and favor and goodness. But I'm here to let you know I'm not talking about that tonight. I got I to go with what, what, what God places in my heart. And I do believe that this is a word in due season, not merely for this house, but for the body of Christ. If you're in Mark 9, say amen. We're going to begin with verse 14. And I'm reading from the New King James Version. And the word of God reads, it says, And when he came to the disciples, speaking of Jesus, he saw a great multitude around them and scribes disputing with them. Immediately when they saw him, all the people were greatly amazed and running to him, greeted him. And he asked the scribes, what are you discussing with them? Then one of the crowd answered and said, teacher, I brought you my son who has a mute spirit. And wherever it seizes him, it throws him down. He foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth and becomes rigid. So I spoke to your disciples that they should cast it out, but they could not. And he answered and said unto them, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him to me. And then they brought him to Jesus. And when he saw him, immediately the spirit convulsed him, and he fell on the ground and wallowed, foaming at the mouth. So he asked his father, how long has this been happening to him? And he said, from childhood. And often he has thrown him both into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. And Jesus said to him, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. And immediately the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. And I just want to use as a topic on this evening, frustrated with my faith. And we get frustrated whenever we get tired. People get frustrated when they get hungry. People get frustrated when they get lonely. My goodness, don't run across somebody on the wrong time. We get frustrated because people don't understand us. We'll get frustrated when we feel like God's not hearing us. We'll get frustrated when we get stuck in traffic. And Lord knows that's some great opportunity in Atlanta. We get frustrated every time we don't have enough money to do what we want to do. We think about all the things that we could do if we had the money to do it, if we had the time off of work to do it. And it's frustrating because we want to do things. We feel things in our heart, but we can't do it. And we get frustrated. We get frustrated if we go to a restaurant and they take too long to serve our food. I tell you, we had a little, my wife and I went out a couple of weeks ago and they, they burned her food up and had to send it back to the kitchen. And my wife got frustrated. She got frustrated. She got frustrated. We get frustrated when we're not getting along with our spouse. 
We, get, we just get frustrated all these times. We get frustrated when we can't find a job, when we're underemployed, when we, we're unemployed. We, we get frustrated when we don't knew, know what move we need to make next. Just frustrated. Frustration is all around us. Frustration when we go from one bad relationship to another. Frustrated when life doesn't seem fair. But understand that frustration is a natural part of life. I don't care how saved, how unsaved you may be. You will deal with frustration. Mark my words, I don't claim to be a prophet, but I guarantee that if anybody in this place is breathing, anybody watching on the internet or television, you will be frustrated. Just, just accept that reality. But here's a question I want to pose from this story that we read from the ninth chapter of the book of Mark. How do you shake frustration when it doesn't want to seem to leave you alone? How do you shake it when it doesn't want to seem to leave you alone, when it's something, when it's a hook in your flesh, when it's a struggle, when it's something that you just can't get rid of. The Bible tells us right here in chapter, uh, in, in, in chapter 9, verse 21, when Jesus asked the father, he said, how long has this been happening to him? He said, from childhood. He's been dealing with this thing his whole life. And as a, as a, as a parent, as a teacher, as a coach, as a mentor, anytime you see your child, your, 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 your student, your mentee, your player, dealing with things and struggling with things, it can be frustrating. Because you can be sitting there asking yourself the question, how long will he deal with this? How many more times am I going to have to talk to her about this? I've talked to her till I've been blue in the face. And I vividly remember, and I think I'm getting a dose of it now that I'm a parent, but I, I just remember putting my mom and my dad through some stuff. I put them through some stuff. And now I'm sort of reaping what I sowed back then in my own life. But you just have to just understand that God is gracious. Isn't anybody glad that God is gracious and long-suffering and merciful? What if God said, I, I've told him twice, Jason ought to know. He ought to know better. I'm not telling him anymore. Whatever mistakes he makes, that's on him. But it says he's been dealing with this since childhood. And if we'll be honest, there's a lot of stuff that we may be manifesting if we're 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, or 70 years old that traces all the way back to our childhood. And we never effectively dealt with it. And it can cause you to be so terribly frustrated because you can't shake it. But what happens when you have tempting moments not to believe? When your belief may waver because of the circumstances in your life, when you're not properly anchored. And Jesus told him, he said, man, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. And it said the father cried out with tears because I think he got a revelation. He got a revelation that, you know what? Things aren't as bad as they seem. And many of us are like the father in this story. There's a part of us that believes, but it's during those tight times. It's during those lean times when our money is tight. It's during those tough times when our, when our spouse is acting a fool. It's during those times when, when, when we get in hot water. It's during those times when people have betrayed our trust. We believe, but God, I need some help with my unbelief. I'm dealing with some stuff. I'm struggling. I'm, I'm, I'm confused, God. I don't know what I need to do next. I know that you've called me, but what does that mean, God? I believe, but help me with my unbelief. Just a few thoughts on faith I want to share with you. Number one, as we talk about being frustrated with faith, the first thing I want you to understand about faith is that faith is progressive. Faith is a progressive entity. Romans tells us that it comes by hearing and hearing. It's a progressive thing. Faith isn't something that you just get one time and that's it. It comes by hearing and hearing and constantly feeding yourself with the word and constantly seeking God's face. It comes by hearing and hearing. It's progressive. Number two, faith is tangible. Hebrews tells us that it's the substance of things hoped for. Faith is something that, that you can almost taste. You might not even be able to put your hands on it and say, this is my faith trophy right here. But it's, it's a substance. You know it when you got it. Number three, number three, number three. Faith is measurable. The Bible tells us in Romans 12, 3, that God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. 